Hey guys, this is Brian. Uh, again, today we're going to look at replacing the unloader on a uh, pressure washer, but we're going to do something a little bit different. I've had some people ask me about how to replace the bolt-on style unloader with an external. So that's what we're going to be doing today, taking the bolt-on style unloader off, or banjo, and we're going to replace it with a remote unloader. Okay, so before we get started, as always, make sure you're wearing the appropriate safety items. You want to make sure you're safe. You go home with all your fingers, your eyes, and your teeth. Uh, and as I've mentioned before, uh, this is a working shop, so there's times I have to stop my videos to take care of my customers. But I usually try to do these straight through so that you can see basically in real time how to do these sort of things. Uh, these are no substitution for going to a certified shop to get your equipment looked at. Although I'm replacing the unloader, there's other things that I look at as well to determine if there's any other potential problems or any hidden problems that are unseen. So that does not address any of that. That's where you would step into a uh, certified shop to get these things looked at. So as I mentioned, uh, we're going to replace what's a, a bolt-on style unloader. And this is a bolt-on or banjo. This is typically what you see on most pressure washers because they're fairly inexpensive. But they would bolt straight onto the side of the head right here. Now this is not the one that came on this pump. Uh, this one actually had an external bypass on it, but it was broken. So we're gonna put a new one on it. Same principle, makes no difference. So this would normally be bolted on. And again, like I said, this is not the one that's meant for this washer, so don't be blowing up the comments about, this is the wrong crew, this is the wrong unloader. I know, but this, this is just for demonstration purposes. So this is how it normally is. You would take this bolt off, you would take this bolt off, then your unloader comes off. Simple as that. If you can't handle that, then you need to stop this video and go somewhere else. Take the two bolts off, make sure the O-rings are gone from inside of here. Once you've got them off, then you're gonna be looking at your new unloader. So an external unloader, um, very, it works the same as the bolt-on style, the difference is the unloader can be attached anywhere on the machine. So you can actually set this up remotely, if you wish, further away from the machine. So if you've got a trailer set up, you can move this wherever you want to move it to. The only attachment to the pump on the unloader itself is right here. So you can have any high-pressure setup from here to here. So it could be six, seven feet away if you want, but it has to be high-pressure connection. This one's actually going to be bolted on right here, okay? So, uh, that, but that's neither here nor there. So you can actually put this anywhere you want. And these external unloaders or remote unloaders are not all look, they don't all look the same. <clears throat> this is an old one. That's no good. Uh, but this is an external as well. So they, they come in all different shapes and sizes. So you can actually contact a couple different manufacturers about uh, different types of unloaders, but they all work in the same principle. So this one already comes plumbed from the factory. Um, there's other parts to it that I'll get to here in a minute. So you water it, as long as you can read, this is gonna be pretty simple, in. That means water's coming in, in, I-N, simple. Out, water's coming out. O-U-T, out. If you're hooking it up this way, then you're an idiot. Just stop. Just go to work somewhere else. Do something else. But uh, that that's the basic principle. Water's going in, controlled by the unloader, and it's back out. This is a thermal dump, and I have videos on what this item is for and how important it is. It's a thermal dump. Temperature gets too hot. Water comes shooting out of here to keep the pump from getting too hot. All right, so uh, yeah, so that's your thermal dump right there. The back side here, this is your water out, but not for your hose. This one is when the, when the unloader bypasses, this is where the water comes out. Bypass, B-Y-P-A-S-S. -S. Bypass. The water's going in, 
and it goes out when the trigger's pulled. When the trigger's not pulled and it's reached maximum pressure that it's set, it dumps out right here and recirculates back through the pump. So it's pretty simple. It's nothing very complicated about it. Clockwise increases pressure, counterclockwise decreases pressure. So the next item on this is going to be the hose. And the hose connects to the back of the, the unloader right there. It just pushes on the clamps down. That's the unloader or bypass, excuse me, the bypass hose. That's where the water is going to kick back around down to the lower end. The next item, and I like these, these are an inlet screen. So you're going to have a fitting, a barb that goes right there. And that's where your hose is going to go to. There's a plug on the other side. You could use it for a variety of other things, but you only need the one. But that's self-explanatory. There's a screen inside. If you unscrew these, this will come apart and you can clean that screen. So this is going to be fairly simple. Um, now there's a couple things besides this you'll need. And that one's going to be thread lock and one's going to be your Teflon tape, your plumber's tape. On this fitting here, you're going to want to put thread lock on your, your fitting. And that's going to be due to the fact that your hose pulls on this and it can unscrew it. So now we're just going to thread that on. Now you can get these unplumbed or you can get them plumbed. There's virtually no difference in the cost of the parts when it comes plumbed or unplumbed. I like it plumbed because it just makes it a little quicker on my end to, to put it all together. Not killing time putting all these bits and pieces on. And you just tighten this up. As soon as that unloader adjustment starts to touch the side of the body, you're good. That's as tight as you're going to need to go. That's it. It's on. Alright, now, but we're not done. I'm going to come around to this side here, maybe you'll see a little better. we got to install the filter. So we're going to do the plumber's tape on this. So you're going to put your plumber's tape on. One to stop leaks. Two to ensure it doesn't leak later. Three to prevent any leak. And we're going to tighten this on. a lot of feedback about using adjustable wrenches on some of this stuff but as I've mentioned before I do these videos to show you how to do these types of things and typically you're not gonna have all the exact tools you need but you're generically gonna have the tools that I'm typically using so if I come back here with a specialized tool and you know then you're hunting around trying to figure out what to use so now we're going to put the nipple on the barb on the back side of the uh, filter. Again, wrap it with Teflon. One, two, three. And it's on. And I'm going to thread this in. Oh, I'm wrong one. I'm using the one from the old one. My apologies. So we got the one that's already on the hose. I'm gonna wrap that one. And then putting it on there, got looking at it, I was like, that thing's already scarred up. And that's the one I took off earlier. Teflon tape on the new one. Now, this came already attached. I detached it because you can't put it on that way. So you have to take your hose off. Now, I leave the barb on the unloader when I do this. I leave that barb on. I take this barb off because you can't put these, you can't spin around when they're hooked together. So I take it off the inlet filter versus the unloader. And you'll notice that my opening here is pointing down slightly. It's not perpendicular to the, to the top. And there's a reason for that. If it's perpendicular, you can't get it in there. there we go. If it's perpendicular, 
the casing is in the way. So at an angle like this, you can feed it on, use the hose itself to spin it on. Get it mostly hand tight. And then you're going to tighten it the rest of the way up with a wrench. Now this one you're going to tighten up, but you don't want to over tighten that one. You want to tighten it until it's good and seated to prevent any leaks. I apologize for the sniffling, but I, allergies got me going today. Same thing here, you're going to put this on until it's good and snug, but you don't want to over tighten it. Being that it's brass, it'll soft, it's soft, you can strip it out. So we're good right about there. Now you're going to make sure that your clamp is on this end of the hose, and you're just going to push it onto that barb right there. Bring your clamp around. <clears throat> and we're going to tighten it. If you don't see me tighten, it's not a big deal. It's a screwdriver. Big deal. <clears throat> Alright, that's it. It's on. Everything is good. Now we're going to go test it to make sure everything's good, no leaks and whatnot. But now the other unloader, remote unloader I showed you, <clears throat> this one, this one has to be set. This is not adjustable per se by the user. This one, you set it to the maximum pressure and it runs that pressure all the time. This unloader is adjustable. Again, clockwise you're increasing Counterclockwise, you're decreasing pressure. So these are adjustable. You don't have to set these. Um, again, you'll run it to make sure you've got no leaks. If you do, address any of the leaks. Again, these are these are good. I prefer these unloaders over the bolt-on style because of this hose right here. When this dumps the water off, this acts like a radiator, and it will... Uh, I forgot where I was at, but... Uh, uh, if I so if I repeat anything, I apologize. But uh, so with the remote style unloader like this, you can actually set this unloader up where you want it to go. But um, this hose, the reason I prefer these types of unloaders, this hose acts as a radiator. So when the water builds pressure and dumps off, it recycles through this hose back down, and it it goes through the pump again, and it heats the water up. And I've got videos of how hot this water can get. Hot water is bad for your pump. Okay, and watch the video on hot water in your pressure washer, and, and you'll see. But when the water dumps off through here, this rubber hose acts like a radiator, and it will cool the water down some, not much, but it allows more time on your pump to sit and idle before possible damage to the pump. Whereas on the bolt-on style unloaders, as I've shown in the other videos, this, it dumps off here to here. So you got this one-inch area and that's nowhere near enough area for this to cool off. Whereas that 16 inch hose, that, believe it or not, is, is gonna make a difference in how, how hot the water actually gets through the recycling of, of this pump. So that's pretty much how you replace a bolt-on style unloader with a uh, remote style unloader. And this, this was something that was requested by a couple different people who watch my videos. So I had the opportunity to set this up. Uh, if you got any questions or if you have a request of something, drop it in the comments. I'll do my best to set it up or answer your question. Uh, till then, I appreciate it. You guys be safe. Thank you.